What's going on, guys? It's your boy, John the Liquidator, coming back with breaking news. So it looked like Indiana Fever head coach Christy Sides just put her critics on notice. After tonight's victory, she went off. Guys, for this one here, we got to go all the way up to Indy. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> to start the video off by saying Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever has found their motion. They picked up the third straight win, the fourth consecutive home victory. Caitlin Clark has made history again in the Indiana Fever uniform, and this team is looking unstoppable. Now, Christy Size and Caitlin Clark was pretty vocal in the post-game interview, but before we get into all that, let's check out this stat lineup. Caitlin Clark nearly had a triple-double again. Again, she had 18 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals in a victory over the D.C. Mystics tonight. The whole team looked like they was gelling. Everything looking good. And I'm telling you right now, they finna get the cooking. I told you guys weeks ago, it's only going to be a matter of time before all this stuff start coming together. Aaliyah Boston out there balling. Kelsey Milchu balling. Caitlin Clark putting on a show. Fans is dubbing Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark ABC2. Now they got a nickname. The duo look unstoppable. And let's check out the stat lineup in the Indiana Fever. Caitlin Clark, 18 points. Aaliyah Boston, 22 points. Kelsey Mitchell, 22 points. Blazia Smith, 11 points. I'm telling you right now, the Indiana Fever is hotter than fish grease. With all that being said, let's check out what Christy Sides had to say to the critics. And Caitlin Clark wrote a damn footage. So, Coach, the the national narrative has been, you know, Fever's terrible, Caitlin's terrible, you know, the last beginning. Co coach is terrible. Coach, coach yeah, is yeah, coach. Yeah, Okay, let's yeah. add that. My journalists are terrible. I, yeah, whatever. Um, clearly, that narrative is wrong. Um, you guys, if the season ended today, you're in the playoffs. I think you would have been the last game, too. Um, schedule's easier. But what what is... Um, what has been wrong about the narrative and now what is right as you guys are starting to actually uh, win games and, and show everyone what you can do? Yeah. Well, we can start with the schedule for this inexperienced team, right? You know, youngest, youngest, least experienced team in the league. That, we'll start there. That schedule was tough with no practice time. And that is where young players, you know, need to play together, get, you know, get time on the court together, understand each other's timing where they're going to be so between not being able to practice playing the toughest teams in the league <laughs> in the league every other night <clears throat> you know I keep saying it but just the way you know just the way these guys keep showing up I'm so proud of them because now they're getting you know they're feeling what it what it should have felt like from the, you know at the beginning for them um just really proud of them um fourth win you know home win in a row, which is really, really exciting for the Fever. Scott, go ahead. To that point, Kelsey said the thing she's most proud of is how they've kept everything inside, how they blocked out the noise. How do you feel you guys have, how do you feel like that has been successful? You know, that's really hard to do. And that is, uh, it's taken a toll on them, um, on all of us. You know, and we're just in a whole different world right now in women's basketball. Not one that we've never experienced before. So we're in this learning curve of trying to figure this all out. And we were trying to do it early against the toughest teams. Now we've had time to practice. Now we've had time to jail. Now we've had time to, to get some minutes together um, <clears throat> and just build confidence. That's another one. Like we just weren't able to build confidence. And that changes you. You know, that changes everything when players are able to, to build confidence. And I think Ryan told me on the way here, our six wins, we, we've had four players in double digits scoring. I mean, that, that's, that's what we can do when we have time to put it together. Go Bob, then we'll go Matt. Christy, now that the schedule is humane, <laughs> what, what, love that word. <laughs> what? Feel free to use it. Yeah. Uh, what has changed, and, and do you see specific instances on the court where you see where you see the learning curve coming along, where you see people starting to understand what they're doing? Yeah. For me, it's the timing of. Um, Mostly the passes into the post. You know, we've been really going into Alyssa and AB, 
Um, really working on some high-low action with those two. Um, I really think, you know, that's just a timing thing. And, and for me, that's work on that um, at practice. Um, so that, to me, is the timing of where we are, the timing of sealing those defenders, the when to step across, when the reverse action has happened, when A.B. is going to step across, how we're going to reverse to the third side to get the ball in to whoever that is. It's just timing, and that just takes obvious, you know, time together, you know. Go, Matt, then we'll go, Tony. I guess, how impactful is it for a younger team to go perfect on the homestand leading into a five-game road trip? Yeah, you know, these um, just to get these wins at home, you know, the fans have been showing up, the sellout crowds, just to be able to put, you know, a product out on the floor that they're proud of. I mean, we can't thank them enough for coming out. The fans have been incredible. Um, but, yeah, just to have these wins and then now to go back on the road, um, against Atlanta, against Chicago, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, they've all been close games, so they're you know they're going to come at us with everything. Um, we just got to stick do it, stick to doing what we are doing, um, staying together, um, just keep improving every time we can step on the floor, whether that's a practice session, whether that's a video session, or in the forty minute game. That's what I told them today. Like, we can't think about what's coming up. Like, this is. This is – we've got to get better in these 40 minutes. Tony and Zion. Chrissy, this is the second game in a row that all four of Melissa, Kelsey, Aaliyah, and Caitlin have all been effective and had similar shot totals. What to you has allowed that, that quartet to gel and play better these last two? I think a, a lot has to do with just understanding, you know, when we're, when we're playing in that fast pace. You know, like if you have the advantage, three on two, two on one, like you keep that advantage and you keep attacking. We're really learning that when we're – now we're back five on five. We've lost that advantage. Now we've got to execute. So now we're able, and we're doing a much better job executing. We're doing a much better job of executing ATOs, um, baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds. But that's just that practice time, being able to work on it. Zion, go ahead. Chrissy, when, when Caitlin was in here, she talked about how, like, you know, your goal was never to, to win the whole championship. You just guys want to just make the playoffs and be in the spot to do that. I guess, how have you been able to keep this team grounded through the, the slower start you had and, and get to a point where you're competing? Yeah, just, you know, it was, it was a challenge for them, you know, just to show up every day, not having success, going one and eight, you know, just just that's really hard to do to keep coming back and just beg, you know, asking them to just stick with it. We're, you know, let's just keep getting better, keep getting better, keep improving. And to me, that's, that is what I am the most proud of is they kept showing up and we've just keep, we just keep improving in certain areas that we're focused on, that we're emphasizing. Go Reggie here on the right. Sure. Coach, I don't know if you've been asked this, <laughs> I haven't heard you talk about it at all, but you've been asked about a lot about what you've done to help keep the players' confidence up, but what have they done to help your confidence up and what's different about this team now going into the upcoming road stretch that w wasn't there before? Um, you know, it's funny <clears throat> when we when we were having that hard stretch, and it was uh, some really hard, tough times. You know, you as a leader, um, you don't have a break, and so you just have. You know, I've got great people around me, great assistant coaches, um, a great trainer, and Todd, who's been doing this for a long time, and he is always really quick to send me a text that's unexpected that just kind of gets me back grounded, lead us, coach, like we're ready, tell us what to do. Um, you know, players have a way of knowing you're down and just walk by you on the bus and hit you on the back. I know it's small things, but coming from players, those are huge. And when they do do those things, I make sure that, you know, I find a way to thank them for that, you know, in the next few days. Because they just, you know, they're grinding too. Um, but again, I've got a great support staff and assistant coaches and, and – um, so I'm really lucky for that. The people I'm guarding are getting back in defense, so I have a little more free reign of like going and chasing down the ball while our bigs are probably boxing out and hitting a little bit more. So, you know, we credit sure to are. them. We um, sure are hitting a lot more. Sorry, my bad. No, um, but, no, I mean, I, I, I think we're really good when I can get it off the rim and push in transition. So I take a lot of pride in trying to chase it down off the rim and then really go. And I think that led to a lot of easy baskets for Aaliyah at the beginning of the game or just all of us in transition, like – um, you know, I think that's it's a really good thing. But, yeah, 12 is, you know, don't get used to it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, 
no one came in here and said we were going to be WNBA champions from day one and let in our locker room like that was never our goal our goal is to get back to the playoffs and we're fighting for that every single night like this is the first time we've won four home games in a row since 2015 like you have to have perspective on things and that goes for life too like have perspective on life and there just needs to be solid perspective on what this team can accomplish and I think everybody in our locker room had that and nobody ever hung our heads we had the hardest schedule to start um we didn't get to practice much and we're playing with the most inexperienced team in the WNBA so um I mean I think it's just this group is you know starting to click and build some chemistry and it's one day at a time but um like I said everybody loves instant satisfaction but sure we would have probably loved that too but I think we all kept good perspective on knowing we just need to get better at one step at a time, and that's what we're con going to continue to do, even though we've won, you know, three in a row at home here. Yeah, Caitlin, really efficient first half for you. Some more off-target passes mm -hmm. uh, in the second half, I guess. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you go about smoothing mm -hmm. that out as games progress? Yeah, I mean, there was a couple here and there, I think. One was a set design where I kind of just assumed the Leo was going to be open and I didn't even really look before I threw it. So I think just slowing down a little bit. Um, honestly, I'm trying to remember the other ones. One, it's Another okay. one was to a Leo okay. that was slowing out of right. bounds. It's all right. Don't worry. Because it was okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Because, I mean, you, you look at Caitlin and you look at the way she passes the ball and so sometimes things are going to happen that way and that's okay because we're not going to let her hang her head. We're not going to hang our head off of any missed passes because we're still continuing to gel together and we know that she's a great passer. And so if she thinks she can get that ball there, she's going to throw it. And if, if I miss it, then it's we're, we're good. We're all right. Don't worry. We're good. <laughs> Don't worry. Thanks, AB. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Aliyah, getting, we haven't asked you about being named Eastern Conference Player of the Week, especially given mm -hmm. what you went through the first couple of weeks. Yeah, thanks. You, is this a little bit more fruitful, a little thanks. bit more meaningful to you? Yeah, it was It was nice. I'm, I'm really glad. Um, I mean, I'm glad my teammates have just continued to put me in those positions. Thank God that I was able to be awarded that. Our spacing that. has definitely improved over the course of um, the last probably couple of weeks. Honestly, I think we kind of struggled at the beginning of the year and then to be honest, it, I think it was a bit of a broken play. We were running a set, and I kind of just ran in a circle and then kind of came off of a down screen because I knew I was supposed to come, in a down, come off a down screen at some point. And sometimes it works best when you fake yourself out because then it really fakes the defense out. <laughs> and it worked, and I got op the most open I had been all night. So um, honestly, like, I prefer to shoot off the dribble. I think everybody knows that. Um, but I think my you know catch-and-shoot shooting and coming off screen shooting has definitely improved over the course of the last two years for sure. That was Caitlin Clark and Christy Side setting the record straight about tonight when they headed to Atlanta. Then after that, Chicago, baby. Get down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about this. Keep them bells on because you know what? I'm going to bring you the news each and every time. And like always, until next time, shake the haters off. I'm out of here. Peace out.